You had a lot, didn't you? Every addiction on the sun. You're bulimic as well. I was indeed, yes. yes. And um, what, what, what kind of diet were you on? If it oh, it was, um, oh, it was pretty gross, actually. I mean, I would stay up for like two or three days taking drugs, and then I, because I wouldn't be eating, and I'd be drinking scotch. And then I'd go to sleep for about two days, and then I'd get up and I'd be ravenously hungry, so I'd have, it was, you know, Sainsbury's cockles. Sainsbury's cockles? Yes. <laughs> I like a nice cockle, Michael. Um, <laughs> Just Sainsbury's cockles? Yeah, jars of Sainsbury's cockles, and then Huggen Dass ice cream, and then a bacon sandwich, and then I'd throw it up. They're horrible. It's the most horrible addiction. You, and, you know, the thing was, I would hurry because I didn't want to put on weight, and I already looked like, you know, Tessie O'Shea. <laughs> <laughs> and Whittacombe, yes, right. Yes, Mar yes, Marie Antoinette. Yeah. Marie Antoinette. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, they, you mentioned earlier, too, about the effect that drugs have on those surrounding you. It's not just you. It, there's a ripple effect, isn't there? Yeah. What was the, 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 the worst aspect of that? I mean, your mum actually cleared off, did My mum moved to Spain. Can't blame <laughs> her. Um, the worst thing about taking drugs and your friends is that your real friends... You isolate them and you hang around with people that don't, aren't your real friends and they're just sponging off you. Um, someone in my position who's quite wealthy you know, would buy all the drugs or you know, provide all the booze. Um, and people, my dearest friends who still work for me, did tell me that I wouldn't listen. And so I didn't want to hear their views anymore, so I kind of shut them out of my life and just listened to the sycophants that I was hanging around with. And um, I'm afraid that's what happens. You shut the real friends who will be honest with you and tell you what they think of you. Um, for example, Mike Hewitson is a dear friend of mine. He works for me still. He wrote me a letter saying, for Christ's sake, stop putting that stuff up your nose. You, you know, and, and I wouldn't speak to him for a year. I was so enraged. Mm. But he, I knew he was right. But, mm. you know, you don't want to hear that. You don't want to hear the truth. So what brought you face to face with the truth? What was it? Uh, I, m one of my ex-partners um, in Atlanta um, went into a treatment center in, in America. And I was so uh, angry about it. And I went to see him there. Um, and I came back to England and I, for two weeks, and I was so furious that he'd gone. Um, and I just thought, oh, he's going to get well, and I'm still doing this stuff. And I was very angry, and eventually I found him, and I went to, uh, to see him at a halfway house, which is where they put you after a treatment center sometimes. And I had a confrontation with him, and, and we had a, we were like close knee to knee, and a counselor for him and a counselor for me, and they just asked me questions. And he busted me completely. He just, he thought I was going to hit him or walk out the room, which was probably my normal behavior. But I actually just stood there and took it and decided from that moment on that he was right and this is what I should do. Well, he told you what was wrong with you. Yeah, he said, you're, you're on a bulimic, you're a drug addict, you're an alcoholic, you're a liar. Um, and he had to write a list of everything that was wrong with me. And it went on for ages. And, my, <laughs> and then I had to write a list of what was wrong with him. And the only thing I could put was, does not put CDs back in the cup. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and it was, it was, it was, I needed to be told, I was ready for it, and I knew what was going to happen. I'm not, I'm not stupid, I knew I was going there to be confronted about this, and, and basically he saved my life, and um, I decided that m point in time that I would seek help, and it's been fantastic ever since. Part of that therapy too I read, which is, I thought was quite interesting, was that to, to, to begin, you had to actually write a letter to, to the drug. I wrote to all the people that I thought I, you know, mistreated and, and apologized. You have to, and, and I've never written anything down in personal detail before. I had to write farewell letters. Um, I had to write history of drug abuse, alcohol abuse, and stuff like that. And uh, then I wrote a farewell letter to cocaine off my own back, which I still have. And um, it was, you know, I was very proud of it, and, and it said everything that I wanted to say. I mean, what, what, what did you say? Mark? Well, I just said, you know, I, 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 treat, I, I put cocaine in the sense that he was my mistress yes. and that I was in love with it and I couldn't see her anymore. Um, and that I travelled around the world and I s s and brought her over by private jet. I had people bring her to me um, and I couldn't afford to do it. And if I said, if I see you in another room, if I walk into a room again and I see that you're there, I'll walk out. Uh, and I just had to, you know, I wrote it as if I was talking to a person. Um, because that's how serious it was, mm. and um, you know, it's uh, it's a hard thing to kick an ad. You know, addiction is horrible, um, no matter what kind of addiction it is.